Greetings. This is the Dungeon Master welcoming everyone to session three of Dragons of the Frozen Seas. We're joining the party today as they are entering a cave that is being used by bandits as a makeshift hideout. They've been here for some time and have made themselves pretty comfortable. The PCs encountered, engaged the bandits in battle in the last session. And after a rather back and forth battle, managed to get the bandits to retreat into the cave. The PCs, instead of going through the main entrances, Ixlana, the bard, had cast a spell of sift, allowing her to search for secret entrances, and they found a side entrance to the cave by the waterfall that allowed them now to hopefully get the drop on the bandits. So everybody is going to roll stealth as they move forward into the bandits cave and we will kind of pick up from there once the battle engages again. You will notice um, a hawk right here that is for one of the players um, who actually isn't here right now to be able to see what is going on. That token is not actually there, so just ignore that. And it looks like everybody's getting their stealth rolled. So um, we're going to go ahead and move forward. Eric is not very stealthy. So Ulf is quietly creeping forward using his his heel to toe, you know, soft footed approach. And behind him, he can hear the clanking of Ixlana's chain mail or her chain shirt and also eric as he's walking forward manages to kick a rock and it kind of goes skittering across the stone floor and makes a noise that is almost surely heard by anybody in the um, vicinity i am going to go ahead and roll that just to um just to see and uh it appears as though the bandits were kind of quietly arguing amongst themselves to keep quiet and get your arrows knocked as they prepare to perforate the players as they enter through the cave entrance that they are all stacked up in front of they're kind of off in the dark just a little and they're waiting for the PCs to stick their heads in so that they can loose a bunch of arrows at them. And so uh, kind of like the three stooges, they're all kind of like, shh, no, you shh, your shushing is louder than me talking and just uh, comically arguing ah. about how to, you know, be quiet enough to ambush you guys. And so... Even though Ulf looks back with a with a not quite angry but disapproving look at Eric, and Eric kind of cringes almost sheepishly. Uh, you guys listen and hear this going on, and know that you are still in the clear for now. They are very perceptive, are they? Well, you know, they're they're not exactly professional bandits, as we covered in uh, the first session. These are 
more like displaced refugees than, you know, uh, career criminals. Can I make a perception check to try and guess where the sounds are coming from? Uh, you guys know that they're coming from just over to the east on the map. Oh, and also, um, before I forget, uh, will everyone go down to the bottom of the chat and set your chat as to your character name? So it should look like this. Except with your characters. And obviously, yeah, obviously. Viter did not say hi. If he could talk, that would be great. Perfect. I'm going to move up and uh thank you thank you okay you're moving up i'm gonna follow suit i will be behind them both with my arrow and with my bow drawn so that's uh my 30 feet okay Now, can we make um, a partial movement and then charge off of that movement, or does the charge have to be from... Okay, well, um, there's there's two things um, going on here. Uh, the first is that you guys can now see where the bandits are. So once you completed your first uh, move there, now we can begin the actual initiative. So that movement that you guys made was not actually um, in turn order. So it doesn't count against your actions. So now that you can see the bandits, everyone can go ahead and roll initiative. And then depending on where you land, yeah, you can take your, your action then. Um, Scotty, uh, yeah, so you could, you could see some people entering, but you would need to roll perception to really, oh wait, no, you've been, uh, able to, to, um, see through the eyes of your familiar, haven't you? So if you've been watching and you yes. know and you know that these guys are uh, friendlies, then you could absolutely shout when you hear somebody coming in that the bandits are right there just to ensure that they see them. Or you can roll perception to notice that they're already sneaking quietly and they might get the drop on the bandits. Star is watching them do that. So Scotty knows about it. And what she'll do is she'll wait until the PCs are sneaking. And then she'll suddenly start yelling from her from her uh, um, prison. Just yelling and screaming and saying, let me out! Blah, 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 making loud random noise as a distraction. The, to help their stealth. The bandit um, turns towards you and draws his his arrow back and and gives you a look like <laughs> can't really get worse she will take cover be in the in the back behind the uh as much metal and wood as possible but if they want to start killing her with arrows they can do that she's already probably quite badly wounded and beaten who knows um yeah she's not going to shut up Okay, so um, the bandit the is... haven't noticed us yet, have they? No, the this one uh, here, he, he moved up to get line of sight in order to um, stop... Ix, uh, not Ixlana, I'm sorry, Scotty, from, um, you know, making noise, and... She, 
She then calls out when she's threatened that way. She calls out, all right, I'll shut up if you really want me to. But she's but she says it nice and loud and keeps talking. Sure, I'll shut up and stop making noise. Why? What's going on out there? Like that. Just to try and give them a tiny benefit on their stealth to help them get the drop on the bandit. Perfect. So the bandits uh, all... Um, maintain position while the one goes and moves over to you to try and get you to shut up. All right, she'll retreat and shut up, but that all took a little while. Yep. Hopefully that was an attack on that bandit. Really? The end turn macro didn't work? Unbelievable. Or did it? I don't know. Can, uh, nope. nope it, it still didn't. has bandit highlighted. But uh, I think that's going to be Ixlana's turn now. While well, she is uh, shouting and while she's been shouting and stuff, I've knocked, I've drawn my bow and arrow and uh, okay, since this is going to be my first time trying to do this stuff together, um, can I sing a song and and still fire my bow with the little arcane thingy that I think I have, the arcane whatever. I'm not sure that you would have line of sight at this point. Right, and then also, um, I believe it is a standard action to begin using bardic inspiration, is it not? I believe so. So, no, you wouldn't be able to both attack and begin using bardic inspiration but because um you can use your lingering song in order to um, begin a bardic inspiration and then have it continue for several rounds you could do a bardic inspiration this round and then um attack the next round okay i think that's what i'll do then um how would i word that correctly uh, you just tell us which bardic inspiration you're using. Just, I'm going to go with the Inspire Courage again, because that's the one I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So everyone has a plus one um, against uh, fear on their morale saves. So. And I guess that's my standard action. That'd be my turn, right? Still have a move action. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll move a little closer, but I'm still going to kind of. I'm just going to stay right here behind Oh, I'm good. Okay, and then uh, go ahead and try out the CT next. That is the um, button for ending the turn. I think that should work. Did it? Nope. What is going on here? Okay, uh, I'll get it. I'll get it figured out. I'll just end the turn the regular way for now. Are the bandits have their back to me or are they facing me? Uh, they all have their backs to you. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I only have the token spun this way in order to make it more aesthetically pleasing, but they are all facing towards the entrance, ready to loose their arrows. All right, I'm gonna move up and 
right before I try to split the back of his head with my sword, I'm going to do my war cry of, die fuckers. Well, so much for being stealthy. I mean, I am being stealthy. They didn't notice it's coming up behind him, right? Stealthy. And I think the Inspire Courage gives a plus one on that damage as well. So, yeah. Perfect. So, Ulf swings at uh, the bandit and manages to strike a telling blow with his long sword the bandit's leather armor provides a small amount of protection from the long sword but not enough to you know keep the the wound from telling and so the bandit loses 10 wounds and is bleeding badly from the the wound inflicted okay it's my turn now yes <laughs> yes did you roll your bear No, I did not. Thank you for reminding me. Not that it'll matter this time, but just for next time. Ah, uh, hang on a second. No problem. Okay, silly question. How do I roll initiative from the character sheet? Uh, you don't. Just uh, use the macro button. Okay, I'm trying to do it for Vitor. So, clicking on Vitor's token, initiative is the third button in from the left on top. All right, I don't even see Veter's token. It's in the lower left. There you go. This is silly. I'm trying to figure... Basically, the character portraits are blocking it. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, I see. If you have character portraits on, you can't... And the size the certain ways, you can't scroll down far enough to see the theater token at all. Oh, I always recommend setting it to names only. 
unless we were doing video chat or something, which, you know, not necessary. Right, but that's going to take them a while to get adjusted. Okay, that should put Vita in the turn order somewhere. I, I'm... Yes. Okay, so it's Eric's turn. I'm going to move up to the other bandit and dual wield my scimitars and try to finish them off. rushing forward it seems that eric has more on his mind than the battle as his swings go wild his one swing is so bad that it actually hits the rock behind the bandit right here and sends that numbing tingling uh sensation down your arm as the vibrations cause your arm to temporarily go numb dropping that scimitar you now only have one scimitar in your hand did that That's not good. like you cold Oh, I think I know what's going on. Did either of my scimitars hit? No, sir. You rolled a one and a two, Brian. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, I'm ending my turn. Uh, and now if you could please try the end turn button at the bottom left. I believe it's working. Yes, perfect. Hilderid, now that you guys have engaged, wants to move forward with her shield raised high using the total defense action. And she, she sort of half hides with partial cover behind this rock with her shield raised, ready to rush out and help you guys if needed. Now, the bandits are all obviously aware of you guys now, so they turn, but they're all also wielding their composite longbows, so the two of them are going to fire their arrows, one at Ulf, and one at Eric, but because they are firing ranged weapons in your threatened areas, both of you receive an attack of opportunity against them before they can get their attack off. So, um, Ulf and Eric, please 
roll your opportunity attack. Which would just be, you know, the weapon you had in hand. So all th your longsword, Eric, just a single scimitar attack. Now that's how you attack. So die fucker. So um Eric swings his scimitar at the bandit with the blade kind of glancing harmlessly off of the thick leather armor. Ulf takes his longsword in the falcon guard with his sword held high and slams it down into the bandit dealing 15 wounds and the bandit is hurt badly I'm screaming I'm shouting their blood's flying I'm killing their ass yes you are And then now the bandits both unleash their arrows. Although the one bandit, this bandit here, because he was hurt, um, is going to receive a penalty on his attack roll. Oh, it's got double macros going here. Oops. Uh, so the bandit who unleashed his arrow at Eric completely misses. Eric was still reeling from the pain of, of hitting the rock with his other scimitar and so when he swung with this one, he swung kind of wide and dipped low right as the bandit was about to shoot him in the head. And so it just completely missed. The bandit that fires at Ulf, I believe 16 hits your armor class. No, got an 18. Oh, wow. And so he manages to... Um, launch his arrow and kind of hit your side but your armor deflects it and you don't take any damage oops forgot the last bandit the last bandit fires his arrow at all And still misses. And um, the fourth bandit over there by Scotty, who appears to have dropped. Um, no, no, I'm right here. Oh, I don't see you in the uh, roll 20. Yep, I'm there. I'm watching everything. Oh. I'll Maybe I'll reload it. Yeah. Because she plans on, on trying diplomacy to talk to that one. Yeah. When so, she gets a chance. so that one uh, goes to pull his sword and is threatening to come in there and cut your throat. Tell me when she has a chance to uh, speak. Uh, I will. You might want to reload and uh, go ahead and roll yourself into the We're, initiative as well, but you can, I, you can I speak did. now. Uh, yeah, I show up uh, as all there. She speaks to him and says, 
Ha ha, that would be my friends here to rescue me. If you surrender to me now, I'll see that they spare your life. Right now, he is still pretty confident and hasn't been fully um, aware of what's going on behind him. I mean, he knows that you guys are here, but he doesn't. He... She will. De she will describe the two the, quickly. The two warriors who are leading the charge, Ulf and Eric, and say, "Those are my friends, Ulf and Eric. They look like this. One has a long sword. They're they they they're cleaving your friends right now. Surrender to me now, and and we'll spare your life. If you want to try to roll intimidate, you can." Although I don't know if it'll show up for me until you uh, I, refresh. I didn't roll. I rolled a ten on. The, I rolled a ten on diplomacy, so no chance that's going to work. Go. Ah, okay, good. Um, so then it is Viter's turn. Yeah. Uh, can Viter get up there and attack? Uh, he should be able to to get pretty close. His movement is um forty. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, I don't think he can get to the far bandit, but I think he can get to the closest one. Um, I'm going to get him there as a standard move and have him attack the bandit with his, with his claws and with his bite. Okay, it, it yeah. looks like... <laughs> so, your dice hate you today. And, I've noticed. And uh, Viter kind of rushes forward um, in order to uh, attack... Why did it only do the one attack? It should have rolled for... Good question. I, it says 10 I I will I will uh, figure that out in a second. But um, basically, what happens is as Viter rushes forward to bite at the bandit, he kind of gets tripped up with Ulf, and as he charges in to bite the bandit, he kind of lands flat on his stomach just kind of sprawled out like a little puppy in front of the bandit. So he won't be able to get his other attacks anyway, but I will fix He's that right away. Wait, so he basically fumbled. Uh, yeah, because you rolled a one, he he's you know not able to to complete the attack. It it not only missed, but it it basically tripped him up. Yeah, I see a six. Is that with the modifier, so? Uh, yeah. So once you add in the the modifiers, it gets. Too. Right, it gets it up to plus six, but see how it's red? Yeah. Red, anytime it's red, that tells you that you rolled a one. Anytime it's green, you rolled the maximum. So if you, if you roll a green on your damage, like you see there, you rolled the maximum damage. If you roll a green on your attack, then um, that's a crit. And it'll it'll roll the the natural crit damage as well. So, um, you know, just 
anytime you see that it's red, know that you fumbled. Okay, so um, I can do lingering performance and then use my short bow as arcane strike for this bandit near Ulf and Eric. And how do I do lingering? You can maintain performance by keep singing, or you just say that you stop the performance and it has a round countdown and we just keep track of it. Correct. I... Yeah. So so if you if you continue your performance, you just say that you continue your performance and then you're free to move and do whatever else. Or if you end your performance in order to take another standard action, you just say whatever standard action you want and then this will be the first round that your lingering song goes into effect. Well, I already shot the arrow, so I don't know if that'll let me do both. Well, if you would like to um, continue performing, we can simply take back the... the um... No, no, it's fine. I'll okay. do it next round. I'm done. Okay. So um, you, you shoot your short bow at the bandit but because they're engaged in melee combat with your friends with your allies um it's a negative four to attack um oh and bruce will you please set your chat as to scotty um and then uh so that takes your 15 down to an 11, which doesn't hit the bandit. And now... I think it is a free action. I'm listening, I'm sorry. Uh, and now, um, because you missed the bandit, there is a chance that you hitch your, your allies. And I keep things... Real simple, it's a 10% chance per ally that you hit one of your allies. And so that means that there's a 20% chance that you hit one of your allies. So we're going to go ahead and roll. 1 through 20, you hit one of your allies. 21 and up, you did not. Okay, how do I roll that? Just the dice? I got it. Okay, so you did not hit your ally, so it just misses. And then, uh, I is it a free action or is it a minor action? Uh, Maintaining bard song is typically a free action. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was a minor action, and I didn't think that you could... Um, continue to play your instrument and fire your bow at the same time i wasn't playing an instrument i was singing oh singing my bad then yes you can absolutely sing and fire your bow at the same time yeah and if i had if i had had an instrument then it would just be lingering that's all but right anyway. Right. It, yeah, it, the the effect wasn't it's ending. Both. Right. Your your effect continues not only because of the lingering but because you maintained it and because your hands are free you were able to use your short bow as well. All right. I've got blood flying around me. The arrow sticking out of my shield my sword's ripping through them and I'm just going to keep cutting them as you go to swing the bandit drops his bow and kind of begs for his life he should have begged before this 
He shot an arrow at me, he's going down. I said die, fucker, not beg. So, um, as the bandit gets down into a kind of crouched position, begging, you bring your sword down, and he drops to the ground. He is badly injured, if not dying. Forgot the button. Okay, Eric is going to swing at that uh, that bandit with his one scimitar. That bandit also is trying to back up and beg for mercy. He he drops his bow and is trying to back up. Not what I was trying to do. Hang on. No problem. No problem. <laughs> okay, so... Hang on a second. The macro buttons went away. Click your token. Yep. Ah. Thought I did. Okay. Yeah, I'm following suit, and I'm swinging my scimitar at the bandit. Okay. So, um, as you swing at the bandit, your scimitar very easily cuts through his leather armor and deals a telling blow. He is dying for sure. All right, and I can't pick up my other scimitar as well, can I? Wouldn't recommend it. Uh, you can't. You can with a move action, but I mean, you don't need to right now. It's your choice. I would just wait till we're finished with the combat, because you know. While you're not going to get it, they get surprised. You. You've only oh, used no. your attack action. You can still move. Two of them are down already. Yeah, I mean, he's got his move action. It's Do, do you want to pick up your scimitar then? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Okay. So bending down to pick up your scimitar... You take your eyes off of the combat for a second, hoping that your allies have your back so that none of the bandits can take advantage of your uh, momentary inattentiveness. And then is that your turn? Yeah, that's my turn. Bottom left corner, end turn. Perfect. So Hilderid is feeling very confident and is shouting a warrior's cry in your native tongue but you know 
she's not exactly a warrior herself, so she's not going to charge in there and get killed. Okay, uh, uh, so I marked Scotty down to, I took away all her vigor <clears throat> and marked her down to half wounds, assuming that she lost a battle yeah. and was beaten by the, by, the, by the bandits. They haven't tortured her to death yet because the uh, boss isn't. Correct. Did, did they strip away her holy symbol or her, uh, her spirit bag? They, they probably did. They took whatever possessions were obviously on her but did not thoroughly search her. Ah, okay. Well, uh, she just speaks to that bandit. She'll back up to the back of the back away so he can't stab her through there and just says, you'd better surrender. If you surrender, they'll spare they'll they'll probably spare you. You're losing you're about to lose your chance though. Your friends are dying. That's all she does. Not going to try to cast a spell. He says, look, we told you, when our boss shows up, you're dead. Got that. That's why I have nothing to lose, but she's engaging him in conversation, so he's not, so he's not going over there to fight. Correct. Uh, so that's all she'll do, just distract that guy. Perfect. Done. And then end turn in the... Oh, you missed... Um, on the chat bar, there's a tab, the second one in from the right, uh, called Macros. You need to click on that, and then there's a box Show Macro Quick Bar. There. Um, click on that. I'm looking. I'm looking for it. Where? Okay, so the chat bar, the second tab in from the right is Macros. It looks like three eyes turned. Uh, counterclockwise 90 yep, degrees yep, i'm there and then show macro quick bar already have it turned on perfect and then end turn in the bottom left corner does not show up all i see is the macro that i put there trip oh um i do not see the end turn macro not there in the bottom left my other map Correct. My the the macros that I put there are there, but that one is not. Go ahead and end it yourself, please. I will, but that's odd. It should should be showing up for you. We'll There's have to... a little box that says in bar. If those aren't checked, that's why it's not showing up, Bruce. Oh, I see it. Thank you. You're right. I got it. Okay, and now this last bandit drops his bow, draws his sword, holds it out towards you guys, seeing how bloodthirsty you are and knowing that surrender isn't an option, and just kind of backs up slowly towards the exit. Star is up in the air looking for anyone else approaching. And as long as no one else is approaching the area, nothing happens. But if Star sees any more bandits or anyone else approaching, Star will notify. Star needs to roll perception. Okay. And Star gets a huge bonus on protect on perception but but that probably won't cut it yeah, yeah um so scott star is plus 13 on perception so that was actually a uh 17 yeah seven thank you thank you oh my god are you serious what what is the deal today dice uh, glad to say I'm not the only one. Yeah, and fortunately for you guys, because essentially this was a no-fail scenario. I was putting the gimme. So um, <clears throat> the bandit leader is stealthily approaching to try and snipe you guys from behind. 
and Star manages to notice just as their shadow slips off into the cave. And Star may be just a bird, but she is more than, you know, predatory enough to understand what shadows moving around mean. Star notifies Scotty, and Scotty yells really loud. Hey, uh, did did Star overheard their names? Right? They were said they heard them say things like Idik and Ulf. Is that right? And Ixlan. Um, I believe Had that. Had you guys yelled any of those names? I believe that um, they said something outside the cave. I not since they've been in the cave. I've called um, Eric Soap outside the cave. You called him Soap? Yes. <laughs> Scotty calls out really loud. Soap and friends, the bandit leader is coming. Watch your watch behind. <laughs> How is this a no use? So, did the bear ever go? Uh, Vitor's turn, right? Yeah, I think so. So we hear we hear them saying that uh, the leader's coming back. Well, someone said that, and that someone used the name Soap. Well, I, I know that uh, that um, Ulf had called me oh, Soap. Ho hold on one second. Um, you guys can't see it because it's on the GM info layer because uh, they're hidden. But the bandit leader, it's it's actually still their their turn. I'm gonna end their turn now. But I I hear that the leader is coming back though. Yes, and um, they they entered the cave, um, which Star saw. Okay. And now it is Vitor's turn. Okay, I don't know where Star is. Um, I'm just going to make a quick perception check to see if I get any additional information. And also, if you could, if I have any reason to believe there's people in front of me where I can't see my, with my field of vision. Yeah, I'm going to roll perception too. I'm going to look, I'm going to turn around. Since we heard the warning, I'm going to turn around face the back. Okay, so that, those are both high enough for me to spot the bandit leader, right? Not necessarily. Okay, okay, so um, what happens is you guys hear the hawk who is flying around outside the cave uh, screech when she alerts her master, her friend, that um, the bandit leader is coming. So you guys all kind of naturally look that way and um Ulf you can hear the bandit leader's footsteps as they hurriedly get into position in the cave and Eric um you notice Ixlana turn and look at, at the bandit leader you can you can tell that she's spotted something and Vitor uh can both hear and smell her coming i'm gonna move towards that sound yeah Vitor's gonna hmm yeah 
yeah, Vader's going to move toward that that way as well. Okay, now that I see him, uh, I've used up six squares of movement. Uh, what weapon well, hold, do you have? Hold, hold on, wait for your turn. Oh, shit, I'm an asshole. Thank you. It's okay. Where uh, where on the map is he, anyway? He is behind me, and I'm still in, like, the middle, the little middle corridor. That's the little small opening. So, my turn okay. next. The I turned around when I heard him say the bandit, the bandit leader is coming. That's all done. We have, I guess that's my movement when it comes to my turn. Oh no, you can you can spin freely in place. Okay, then I'm good. But it's Peter's turn right now, so we got to get that done. Yes, let's let the adorable little polar bear cub go. Surely he shall end this battle with his fearsome cuteness. Veter goes tumbling out in front of the bandit leader who immediately surrenders. Immediate surrender? What? All right, well, works for me. No, I'm I'm just kidding, but <laughs> Oh, okay. You failed your perception check. I mean I would immediately surrender as long as you let me pet your polar bear cub, but that's me. The bandit leader isn't gonna do that. Point take. Okay. Uh Vitor is going to Get as close to the bandit leader as he can, and he can't get within attack range, I don't think. Uh, he could if he had charged. Is Vitor feeling brave today? Yeah, I think he is. He's going to do just that. Despite his earlier um, fumble, Vitor bravely charges in to attack the bandit leader. Okay, it, it's still not rolling for the claws. Did you do the full attack? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, it, hold on one second. I don't think he could do a full attack anyway since he's moving. Right, yeah, no, because he charged, you only get one attack. Ah, okay. Well, that I guess that's you do, his turn. You do then. get plus two to that, though. When you charge, you get plus two to your attack. Plus to plus one for the song still going. Correct. So that would be 11. Which still does not hit. Womp womp. Okay, that's his turn. Okay, so I turn and see the bandit leader approaching. Um, I see that Hildred is still crouched down and ready, but I'm going to try and daze her so that uh, we can question her later. Well, I got, well, that's what I'm trying to daze the leader for, so I can. Yeah, that that's a that's a good plan. Also, one of the uh, only non-violent plans you guys have had so far. Kill. So, 
Um, the bandit leader needs to roll a will save. And crushes it. Well, I had to try. Yeah, no, I I feel bad that the dice were so unfavorable there because that was an absolutely brilliant move. By dazing the bandit leader, you deny them their turn and give you guys a chance to, you know, take them right here and now, tie them up, question them, etc., Unfortunately, the uh, dice have decided to be funny today, so uh, we're going to, um, you know, be having ones and twenties. I think. So, is there anything else you want to do on your turn? I guess I should move closer to Hildred and I guess or because I can't really I can just move right because I've already done an action right right. how do you do the whole yellow arrow thing there that that is the ruler it is um, the circle with a little line sticking through it, kind of like an upside down Q. Over, yep. Yep. got it. So I moved closer. So hopefully, with Hildred there and me there, hopefully I can block the entrance so they can either. Hopefully they'll either finish off the bandits and I'll keep them blocked in. That's what I'm attempting anyway. guess I'm done. I can uh, take a charge action at him, or do I have to have a straight line the whole way? Um, you would... be able to move and then charge. So, uh, what is your what is your movement? 30 feet? Yeah, I've used up not quite all of that, but this is where I first see see him. So from here, I could charge. That's Cor correct. Probably Cor what. Who are you charging? Good old bandit leader with my ferocious war cry. So any charge bonus gets it up to, I think, 19. And then any charge bonus damage plus the one from the lingering performance. Right, the bard song from Mixlana gives another plus one plus one to hit down. Okay, so um and saves. So Ulf charges in using his momentum from his charge and feeling inspired by Ixlana's song. His sword cleaves into the bandit leader dealing a significant yet not fatal wound. Ixlana, you need to end your turn. I thought I did.
just send it for me. I accidentally locked out. Where's the actually where's the done button? We got it. Okay, Eric is also going to charge at the bandit later. So everybody is just leaving the bandit who is escaping alone? Apparently. That's what I'm saying, but you know. No, bandit leader is going to have more info. I, I just wanted to know for sure. I, I have no um, input. I am an impartial observer to that. Brian, do what you want, because I can't see to tell you anything. Okay. Um, how far can I move with a charge? With a charge, you can move um, double your speed. Okay, and then I can still attack afterward, huh? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to charge and attack the bandit leader. Sorry, just putting the finishing touches on uh, Viter's full attack macro set. It works. All right. Um, <clears throat> Eric charges at the bandit leader, rushing past Ixlana and Hilderid. He swings his scimitars. The first one, the bandit leader deftly steps to the side, but that is exactly what Eric anticipated as he was only setting her up and swings his scimitar hard into her side as she steps right into the blow. The bandit leader drops to her knees. She is in pain and not Man. not dying, but what? very, very... Yeah. Right. yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to growl, yield or die. Okay. Uh, would you like to roll intimidate? Absolutely. Very intimidating. And then is that your turn? Oh, yeah. Okay. So Hilderid starts screaming, Where is my son? What have you done with him? And oh, God. She goes to charge forward. Would anyone like to grab her? I will grab her and tell yeah. her, tell her, hold on. We, we're getting, throwing yourself into combat isn't gonna, isn't, isn't gonna I'll, be good right now. He, she's already yielded. So, so go ahead and roll dexterity to see if you can catch her in time. And if she fails, I'm going to try as well. Okay, so... I failed. Yep, you, you go 
to catch her, but you're just you're singing. You had just loosed an arrow, so you know you were you were in the process of like grabbing another arrow, or or you know you just weren't ready to grab her. Eric quickly drops his scimitars and turns and grabs at Hildred. Roll your CMB. What's CMB again? Combat maneuver. Okay, I got a 14 on it. That's uh, not hers. I'm just getting the macro up because I didn't put her CMB in. Okay, so it's actually 15 because of the Bard song. If both of them miss, I'm going to try to interpose my body between her and the bandit leader, but I'm not going to try to grab. I'm just going to have too much focus on the bandit leader. Okay, so you said that's a 15 that you had? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so um, basically you go to hold her back and you manage to slow her down just enough f so that she can't attack this turn, but she slips through your grasp. And still has her axe held high as if she's ready to end this bandit's life. Scotty keeps chatting with the bandit who's near her. Basically saying, your chance to surrender might come, come might end soon. Don't think your friends are doing well. Hear those screams? Don he says, those are the screams of your friends as our leader is picking them apart. It might be the case. This bandit is actually no longer so cocksure and all of a sudden his morale falters and he says were, were you he probably got a look at his two dead companions then yeah well you know he kind of is piecing together the sounds that he's been hearing and you know he hasn't heard any of their um shorthand for everything's okay and all of that so uh he he's starting to get a little worried and as he was starting to get a little worried um you know then all of a sudden he was listening and he thought he heard Ulf screaming to to surrender at the bandit leader and like that's never a good sign like you're already telling him he needs to just surrender because your friends are here and they're all screwed 
and then he hears your friends telling the bandit leader to surrender and so now his morale has just completely faltered and he is um turning to you and he and he gets real quiet and he's like were you were you serious that like you'll you'll let me go if if i just drop the key in here i can just i can just leave you'll you'll not pursue me unlock the door let me out give me my gear back i will see that my friends do not kill you not that they're really her friends but she's bluffing that way uh yes let he, me go and i will try to and i will try to spare your life he's he's too smart for that so he just he throws the key into the into the cell or like drops it just inside the gate as far away from you as possible basically he's giving himself however much time it takes you to get to the key and then get to the the bar and unlock it and he just starts running scotty says to him as he's departing thank you for that i'll see to it that we that we don't pursue you he just runs. He's gone. Oh wait, he has to he has to undo the bar on the door. <laughs> so, um he didn't think this one through as much as he thought he did. And as he goes to turn to run, he runs right into the bar door and he immediately starts to like panickedly try to lift the bar scotty says to him that's fine we'll wait you go ahead and make your escape and cannot lift the bar and just panics and like puts his back up against the door and just starts to hyperventilate <laughs> she says to him take your time good man unlock the bar and run away we won't hurt you as long as you offer no further resistance well, that's his turn, so... And then I assume you use your turn to walk up to the key and pick it up? Yes, she picks up the key and moves towards the lock. Done. Perfect. You want to try out the new end turn button? Perfect. And then, like I said, that was the bandit's turn. The other bandit, he right. just ran. He's gone. So now we have two bandits that we still have tied up we have two that ran away they're going to be coming more so be prepared uh what was the leaders uh star Star does a flyby the entrance of the cave and gives a squawk intended to mean everything all right out here. Yeah. So Star has seen the two bandit, well, the one bandit uh, run and would have, you know, turned to look at that, made you aware of that. And then having already um, surveyed the perimeter would have uh, also let you know that there are no other bandits approaching from any directions. Is there any way, Star? Well, okay, done. Okay. That was perfect. Same button? I hit it once, I'll hit it again. Oh, I'm sorry. It, you already did. I didn't see that it was on the bandit leader's turn. I was thinking about what's going to happen here as the negotiations and interrogations and all the other Asians begin. Um, so uh, the bandit leader is indeed holding up a hand in supplication and kind of lifts her other hand slowly which her bow is dropped and 
um, pulls her hood back and you can see that this is barely more than a girl a very young woman early 20s and not any kind of warrior you know she she doesn't look like Brienne of Tarth or or um Ronda Rousey or or some you know warrior type she she looks like a young peasant girl that is forced from her home and far far away from the lands that she knows just trying to survive So Vitor so goes v and eats her. <laughs> Are we still following the initiative? Uh, we we should follow the initiative for now until the other bandit is dealt with. So. Uh, Vitor isn't capable of rolling intimidate, is he? Um. Technically, he is capable of intimidating, and if you feel that he would take a kind of guard dog sort of posture and, you know, stand over the bandit leader, maybe even rear up on his hind legs and use his paws all intimidating, bear-like, uh, then I think that that would be a good, a good thing to do. Yeah, I think he's going to do just that. And by the way, this is the most adorably intimidating stance you've ever seen in your life. You know, this is exactly like a baby Rottweiler getting all tough and barking, but it's got that high pitched puppy bark yet. So it's like, oh, you're ridiculous. <laughs> And exactly, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Viter is is every bit the the polar bear rearing up on its hind legs, using its lips and mouth the way that you see a polar bear do. And on a full grown polar bear, it is it is bowel inducing, but with a baby polar bear, it is just absolutely the most adorable thing you could possibly see, and it just makes you want to go pick him up. Okay. <laughs> well, he, he tried, but uh, maybe it'll defuse the situation, too. He's going to end his turn. Oh, yeah. You, you look, and the bandit leader is, you know, basically melting. She's like, oh my god, I didn't know you guys had a baby bear. <laughs> we we could have we could have negotiated from the start. <laughs> Alright, my turn. So I uh approach I approach the bandit leader cautiously but non threateningly. All right. Um, she's already surrendered, pretty much, right? Do I? So I shouldn't really have to tie her up. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna. Question well, I her. mean, if if you guys trust her and everything, I mean, you know, there's there's always right, well, there's always the chance that somebody has tricks hidden up their sleeve and everything, and in this society and with these guys as far as you know being you know outlaw bandits robbing and pillaging the the roads which you guys are a raider society but like you don't you don't tolerate people robbing and stealing from you guys as you travel your roads like that's what you guys go do to other people you know so like the these guys are are bandits and 
as as far as you're concerned they I'll could be her. yeah they could be dangerous so now when you say you search her just to be clear she is kind of on one knee with with uh her other uh knee up kind of half crouched down and her her hands are up at her sides like at her shoulder height just kind of up so you approach and have her stand up or you approach and crouch down by her i just want to know exactly how you go about searching her just a minute Stand up slowly, turn around, drop your weapons. Stand up slowly, turn around, drop your weapons. Okay, so she already dropped her bow on the previous turn, so you can see her hand. She she says, I don't have any weapon in my hands. I have my sword still in its sheath. Do you want me to unbuckle my sword belt? No, put your hands on the wall and turn around. Okay. She she begins to do that, and when it's her turn, we'll complete that action. Okay. Uh, so she's on the wall, and I'm right behind her. So I guess I will end my turn. Search and end my turn. Okay. So um, you can go ahead and roll for for your your search there which one is that uh hold on it's under skills babe perception nope not perception not perception uh that would be slide of hand maybe I don't know. Miss wow, Williams really? Here? There's there's no like this is this is what I sometimes prefer about like 3.5 or even uh fifth edition has investigate which would do, you know, for this, but I guess perception I I I wouldn't really call it a perception thing but or miscellaneous skill but i just did perception yeah let's just go with perception and um so as you search her um she does have her quiver of arrows she has her short sword um and and a couple of of other um or I mean a hand axe, not a, not a short sword. This this character has a I hand mean. axe as her as her melee weapon. So you find you find that stuff along with like um, a a coin purse and your basic things that you would carry with you. She doesn't have her whole pack with her, um, but you know just what you would take with you on your personal belongings um you know purse wallet cell phone that kind of stuff okay well actually it's already pressed done so it's when somebody else's turn yes so ulf as ixlana is patting down this young woman what do you do <laughs> gonna glance at eric and say go secure the other bandit I'll keep Hildred from killing anyone else. And then um, I'm going to ask the bandit leader, are you the one that put arrows in me last night? She, she says, no. Fortunately for you guys, I was away hunting so that we could eat. If I had been here, this would have gone much differently. You were here, just not at the right time. 
yeah. why yeah. your your men attacked this woman's family. Do you know where the child pointing to Hildred with uh, that lusty look of violence in her as I was out hunting I also happened to come across his trail and I went to follow it it led to a cave but I didn't see any sign of him and needed to get back with food for my people. Tell your men to stand down and we'll stop the slaughter. And Hildred just loses it. She's like, you left him to die! And she's like, ready to just smash her head against the wall. Your son could still be there, woman. Calm down. Which isn't gonna help, so... I think that's my turn. Uh, why don't you go ahead and roll diplomacy to see h how much you insult her this time? I was going to Good wording. Ixlana, you would like to step in? Yeah, all f it just as just as abrasive as ever, just like you said it, you know, your son could still be alive. Calm down, you know, and she's just she's ready to smash your head against the wall now. Mine's 12. And Ixlana, you attempt to defuse the situation, but your nerves are frayed. You, you've you been singing your uh, song of battle to inspire your comrades and fighting for your life, getting arrows shot at you and shooting arrows back at the other bandits. It's a lot like being in a shootout and so your nerves are a little frayed and as you try to talk to Hildred you just you can't find the right words to express that she should focus on you know the fact that this leader can now show you guys where the trail is where this cave is and you guys can um <laughs> take 20 or or did oh, you no, need a two. a two yeah just take a two yeah i was gonna say take 20 you take 20 minutes to slowly and carefully explain why she needs to calm down are you doing that if i ever take a 20 with her just assume it's a two yeah so um <laughs> hilderid is going to attempt to attack the bandit leader. So somebody either needs to try to stop her or... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to stop her. I'm going to try. Her, I'm going to assist. Okay, so... I, I, I see what's going on with uh, basically Hildred blowing her top and I completely ignore Ulf telling me to go after the other bandit. And I'm going to... Also, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to attempt a diplomacy check as well. This well, be diplomacy won't help at this point. She's she's trying to charge past. So. Okay. Um. Eric and Ulf, you you can both. Uh, try to attempt a CMB to grab her and stop her. Using his honed reflexes as a warrior, Ulf quickly grabs Hildred's raised arm as she goes to slam her axe into the back of the bandit leader's skull. None of that now! He says, this is not our way. And he glares at Hildred, letting her know that as bloodthirsty as you guys can be in the heat of battle, now that you have accepted her surrender, it would be dishonorable 
to just slam your axe into the back of her head without like giving her a proper execution. Like if you, if you tell her, Hey, listen, we're going to execute you and you like go give her a proper execution. That's one thing, but to just attack her from behind, you know, it's, it's just not something that you guys would be accepting of in, in your society. Not that you're like totally chivalrous or anything, you know, just there's the heat of battle, there's raiding and pillaging, and then there's just being a dick. Yeah, and I'll see you later. Forgive my combat roll. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna try that because you rolled it too late. But I took yeah. care. of it. Fine. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Well, I guess that's gonna be my turn then. Uh, there. Well, I'm gonna try to. Can I try to tie up the bandit leader? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, but you had attempted a CMB, um, so you, you had went to grab, but it, it, the reason that you weren't able to grab her is because Ulf had acted so quickly and so expertly that he just grabbed her before you could. And so now you can turn and start to tie up the bandit leader, but you're not going to be able to like get it done this turn or anything. All right, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. And then, as I said, Hildred attempted to attack the bandit leader, and so um, that was her turn, and now she is grappled by Ulf until Ulf decides to release, or she wrenches her arm free. We'll figure that out after we decide whether we're still going to be in initiative order once the next... Uh, round with the bandit here goes so scotty you scott yes scotty go. inserts the key in the lock, lock and opens the door and if as can... as you insert the key into the lock you roll a dexterity check to see how easily you can do that through the uh through the bars Not so good. Just a nine. Did it whisper it or something? I it did it for me. It, maybe it's just being slow. Uh, I rolled a, and I'll I don't know right why back. there's a mi oh there's a minus four because she's so critically wounded. Yes. Low half. Yes. So I think oh, there uh, it is. what I she did it. is she yep, just delayed. She put the key in the lock and she tried to turn it, but it's but she's dizzy from blood loss and slippery from blood and couldn't quite turn the key in the lock to open it. Yes, the the rusty uh, cage that has been here since long before these bandits made this their temporary lair. Um, th this bar ha these these bars have been rusted and the locking mechanism is very tight and it takes a very hard firm grip to twist it and with your weakened state you manage to slip the lock in the key into the lock and and get everything there and you go to turn and it's just kind of your hand slips off of it. You weren't expecting to have to to have to use that much grip. Check and with a quick look around the room, does she see any sign of her gear or a or or her spear in particular? Not Is that in this room. Not in this room. Okay, done. I'll hit to end turn. Oh, and guys, um, just today, usually I'll be here the full session, but today I need to go on the hour in 35 minutes. Ah, okay. So this bandit uh, is going to roll to see if he stops hyperventilating. She, she's, she'll, yeah, if she'll so, say, just open the door and go, guy. 
this bandit hearing that and summoning all of his strength decides that his only chance is to just run all the way through the other tunnel through the other entrance and just full sprint books it damn the torpedoes which is going to put him where like going towards us uh he was coming towards you guys but um because he can move 120 feet he he ran straight past the the two fallen bandits and and out the the tunnel he's kind of just outside the the cave entrance um maybe 20 20 to 30 feet outside of it okay he didn't he didn't come anywhere like even close to hilderid and she's the closest to where he would have been a good 30 feet away from hildred at the closest okay okay and with that with the other bandit essentially being gone unless anybody wishes to sprint after him no okay so uh with with that um we're gonna go ahead and end the initiative order and we can we can go from there all right i'm gonna shove hildred's arm back and release her and how much blood do you need before you're happy we should find your son not to kill every why not both can we find your son before we kill them all? Y yes. Yes. That is what we should do. Jesus, woman. All right. I think you mean Thor? Take it easy, everybody. Yes, Thor. All right, I'm going to finish tying her up. Now we get to roll initiative again, right? Nope. No. No initiative. Now, um, you guys would like to tie up the bandit leader. What else would everybody gonna, like to do? I'm going to go towards uh, the prisoner. I'm going to walk back and inspect the rest of the cave and find this other person that's been talking the whole By the way, uh, are my attacks supposed to use vigor? Yes. How much movement do I have left? How can I tell again? You're not in combat. You can just move. And yes. uh, Scotty is just having trouble with the key. She slips on it again. And when you come in sight, she's just turning the key and slipping the lock open. Okay, that's what I was coming to do. I was coming to see if you needed a hand with that. You look like you're having right? some trouble. <laughs> yeah, I was coming to ch coming to check on. Hello Scotty. there, friend. Greetings, greetings. I I'm not one of the bandits. I'm friends with the bird. Please don't kill me. And with my diplomacy, as usual, I'm going to ask, and who are you? I am Scotty. I am the daughter of K of Chief Rolf from the north. I was captured by these bandits. I took some down, and thank you for... Well, I hope you don't uh, kill me, but even if you're going to kill me, do it clean. They were going to torture me to death. My beard, a woman, and she's not yelling at me! No, uh, we don't have any plans on killing you. What uh, we would appreciate. Do you know their purpose? Why they're here? By the way, my name's Ixlana. Hello, Ixlana. That was fine music you played there. 
Why, thank you. Your bird helped us out with the with outside uh, combat and he, and was a great help to helping us find you. I'm glad Star was able to help and make it a little easier. Are any of you d wounded or 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 dead? Ixlana is. I'm Ulf. Let's get you out of this shithole. She actually opens the gate just about then and walks out, leaving the bloody key in the lock. Okay. Oh, she again. Okay. She keeps her arms up and hands up, and I mean you no harm. They had me prisoner. And you'll recognize the voice of the person who was trying to cover your approach. Yes. We, we and I'm going to sheath my sword. And I think if I, I don't think it, I'm going to withdraw, I'm going to put my bow down to my pack or whatever it is. Shoulder sling. You can tell that this, uh, uh, this woman who's coming out has, of the, of the prison has, uh, she's clearly pretty wounded. There's blood in several places. It looks like she's been stabbed and beaten and not in good shape, but not in, but still standing. Definitely in the category of the walking wounded. All right. Um, you tend to her. I'm going to check on the body, see if they're still breathing. We can cure each other or I can cure myself. <laughs> Whichever. Okay, so about that time, I think I've got the bandit leader tied up. I'm going to march toward everybody else with the bandit leader and uh, basically try to get back with everyone else. Okay, and uh, Ixlana, you heal eight vigor and wounds. So you have full vigor and 23 full health. So there you go. Unless was that on somebody else? No, no, that was on no, yourself. Was on yeah. Me. Yep, yep, yep. A vigor. I didn't fish. All right, the bandit leader. Uh, I'm basically marching her with me while she's tied up. Okay. Oh, and I forgot. Well, we were in combat to uh, do this. So real quick. One, and that's a fail. Two, and that's a fail. And three, the other bandit dies. All right, so they both expired when I get to them. I'm still going to check to see if they're alive or dead. This, this bandit right here is still alive, but badly hurt. I'm going to do what I can to stop the bleeding and to keep him alive. We'll hang him for what he's done if it's necessary. I only have one spell point and I don't think I can do any. Can I, I don't know if I can do anything with that. One spell point can cast one cantrip. So you have you have one uh cantrip left that you can that you can cast but uh that that's it for today unless you guys mm -hmm. take a a short rest yeah, well before we do that can we uh search um search our, all these boxes and things yes and as you begin to search the first thing that you're going to find Scotty is your weapons and gear because I mean, obviously they haven't had time to catalog and inventory and put all of that stuff away. So, um, all of your weapons and gear are over here in their pile of stuff. All right. So I am going to, uh, I think I can do sift. I think that's a one thing camera to see if I can figure out what any of the stuff in the pile is. Uh, are all of the band or 
is basically all the bandits that are going to live, are they stabilized at this point? Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're not in the negatives. So they're just extremely wounded, not actually dying. Like it's only a flesh wound. Well, one hell of a flesh wound. Yeah, no, it's a bad one, but, but they, they will live, you know, say, saving that they, they don't, uh, get an infection or something like that. Okay. I introduce myself to Scotty. I'm Eric. Uh, this is the bandit leader that, uh, basically imprisoned you. Well, uh. It's entirely up to you, but uh, I believe her plan was to torture me to death. So uh, you do as you like. With the her. the men were just saying that we try to seem tough and intimidating. the The fact of the matter is that we haven't killed anyone except for this woman's husband, who, when we shot arrows at their caravan. To try and and um, you know get them to stop so that we could take their stuff. Uh, he he drove his family over the cliff. That's that's how the boy got lost, and that's that's how he ended up losing his own life. We we didn't try to kill him, but he tried to drive off and and run off, and he went right over the cliff. Sense motive to see if I believe a word coming out of her. Yeah, ditto. Okay. Did uh, I identify? Did I identify anything in the piles? Uh, yeah. I I'll get into that in just a second when I can take a a minute to explain everything that you guys find. But uh, okay. So, Eric. You look at her, and it, it's like trying to read Phil Ivy. You're like, I don't know. Uh, is she is she bluffing? You can't tell. You're just completely at a loss. Ulf, you look at her, and you're you're pretty sure that she's telling the truth. And so you look over at Hilderid. And you can see Hilderid's face turn crimson, and she just screams, "You lie!" And she uh, goes to attack again. Would I believe this, even with the fact that they ambushed us last night? Uh, well. I mean, you know, they are bandits. They're they're not claiming to be like saints here. They're just saying they haven't killed anyone. I'm just going to yell, we need her to find your son. And if she wants to kill him, that's well, her link to her well, son and her. What is she doing? Is she going to attack the bandit later yes but she doesn't have her her um battle axe in hand anymore right now okay so she's just like gonna like try to slam her head against the wall or or something which would probably kill her in her state yeah i mean it ain't gonna be good all right, so I'm going to And uh now try and calm her down. Yeah, now um while you guys do that, I'm going to quick take a moment to explain what Ixlana was able to find. Uh so it's mostly um goods, winter clothes, um cooking utensils, um you know, the the basic things that you need to to live. 
and some food and a bunch of arrows, some bows, a few assorted melee weapons ranging from daggers to short swords to axes, um, not a veritable armory, mind you, just like a couple different melee weapons, a couple bows, and just, you know, as many arrows as you guys can physically carry, um, more or less. The, these guys rely heavily on using arrows and intimidation to get everybody to surrender and then they just take their stuff and so they make arrows all day every day all of the non-combatants just make arrows for them so they have hundreds hundreds of arrows and everything else is more or less just like little things that seemed to be of value <clears throat> um and there's one chest in particular that is locked and has a deeper richer finish it's got like a, a nicer varnish and lacquer over the wood and the edges are trimmed in some kind of precious metal uh, some kind of silver maybe platinum you'd have to make an appraise check to really be able to tell but it's definitely not your typical steel and iron that most uh, chests would be hinged and bound in this is some kind of precious metal and it has a very ornate and um, advanced looking lock on it and it, it's just a smaller chest it's it's not a huge chest like one person could probably carry it with difficulty but still you know one person could probably carry it so um, that is the one item that really jumps out as something of value everything else is i wouldn't say garbage but you know functional garbage okay so is hildred still trying to kill this bandit later uh yeah, so if nobody stops her, she is going... I did a diplomacy check way back. Yes, and you rolled... Uh... Oh, 17. I'm sorry, I saw the 8, and I, I thought that was your roll. Um, no, 17. Hey, look, you guys are color co coordinated for my uh, convenience. So, um, 17 manages to get her to hesitate just enough to where she she doesn't go charging in but you can tell that if somebody doesn't grab her and like remove her from the cave that she's just going to go at this bandit leader sooner or later all right um well while you were explaining about all the stuff, um, could you do us a favor and distribute the stuff to the inventories? And I don't have much. Uh, I don't have much yeah, of anything I can carry. Obviously, yeah. we're, gonna take, we're gonna take pretty much anything of value with us. Obviously. So um, there's there's the chest, like I said, that's that's the one real treasure here. And then and there's some bows, uh, a couple of sorted melee weapons, nothing fancy or, or, you know, obviously superior in any way, and a ton of arrows. Everything else is like food, 
pots and pans, cookware, you know, mess kit type stuff, uh, rope, clothing, uh, you know, just the stuff that you need to take care of a group of people. And so uh, <clears throat> there, there's nothing much there unless you guys want anything of that in particular. However, uh, and normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this, but because it's, um, because it's, um, you know, the early stages of this campaign and you guys aren't 100% used <clears throat> To the way that I DM and everything, I want to just make it clear that somebody should roll an appraise check on the bandit leader's equipment. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll do that. I'll already did. I'll get around to it, but it'll be after I open the chest. So if you're going to do it before then. All right. So while you were talking, I talked with Scotty and I put some bandages on her, I think. And unless it failed, I'm not really sure. Um, I guess other than that, I'm going to go talk to Hildry, Hildry now and say, Hildred, um, we will have to keep the bandit leader alive to find, find your son if you still... If he's still out there, but you know, now's the time. Like, what's your version of the story about the cart? So, after um, you know, considering for a moment, Hildred looks at you and says, "It's true, my husband." attempted to escape and lost control of our wagon and sent it tumbling over the cliff. That's how my boy got lost and how he lost his life. So your boy is already dead? No, no, my husband lost his life. Oh, my boy my I'm boy sorry. went went tumbling and I don't know, but I wasn't able to find his body. All right. We will help you recover as lot if we can, uh, but this information... Well, the leader not... said that she found his tracks, so he, he's been moving. He might be injured, but he, he is alive, or was alive. Yes, we're going to keep hope that he is alive, and we will help you. We will continue to help, help you find him. Um, we can use the bandit to lead us to the cave where she talked about and go from there how far uh, i asked the bandit leader how far is the wagon uh well the wagon was back where you guys were at the mountain pass where the uh bandits had ambushed you um so the that's where that's where the wagon had crashed and and all of that uh so that's not if if you're asking where the where the trail is where she where she found the boy the cave that he went in that's further to the to the north and she's willing to show okay. you okay okay that's what we're going to be doing i'm going to try and crack open the chest while they're all dicker yeah yeah, absolutely. Are you going to attempt to pick the lock or just smash it open? I'll yank on the lock a couple times, but I'm not going to try and pick it. Oh no, it's not. Also, it's not that kind of smash. lock. It's a. It's a self. It's it's contained within the chest itself. So it instead of being a padlock type thing that locks over a latch, it the top of the chest closes down. And then the bottom of the chest has a locking mechanism in there that locks the lid in place. It's a very um, advanced it, and it, solid locking mechanism. Okay. Before that, I'm going to ask the bandit leader what's the uh, how to unlock. 
how to unlock it. What's in yeah. the box? Tell me what's in the box. I need to know. Um, so she says, I mean, you know, I, I understand that, like, I've surrendered to you guys, but, like, are you really just going to, like, take all my stuff like you already killed some of my people and everything i'll show you where the trail is but can't we just like let you guys go and you let us go and no you still have a blood debt to hildred you have to pay her. i tell her fork over the key and i roll intimidate on it your men attacked us they died you killed her husband you must make recompense for that. So kill her husband. That's true. But their attack is what caused him to die is also true. So, you know, six of one, a dead husband of the other, you know. And bottom line, I don't see it as stealing. I see it as they're paying a blood debt. Oh yeah, you're you guys are very mu- and also even even without the blood debt part of it, you guys are a warrior people who you know very much believe that when you when you take somebody out in battle that their stuff is yours. And I guess while I'm over here, I'll actually make the previous appraise check that I rolled. Ah, yes. And um, so when you appraise the uh, bandit leader's gear, you can tell that her composite longbow is of superior masterwork quality. This is a you know, bow that some master craftsman spent three to four months meticulously crafting and getting the balance and the draw just right to be able to um, give it the, the best possible um, draw to power ratio and and um, let off (laughs) i'm like come on i i've done archery i know what this is called the the best let off to where you can you can draw it back and not have to hold it at the 100 percent draw weight and still get the full power and so this bow is just, I'm not going to say once in a lifetime because, you know, like some kind of plus one magic bow would be like a once in a lifetime type of find. But this is definitely, you know, a one in a hundred thousand type of bow. Um, where'd you get this woman holding up the bow? She uh, marveling. Look, she looks defiantly at you and says, I made it. Well, you are handy. Open the chest for us. I'm going to sense motive because I think she's lying. You think she's lying. You you had already thought she was lying, and the more you you scrutinize her, the more you convince yourself she's lying. Uh, I don't believe that for one second. If you you claim you haven't killed anybody, but for 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 such a for a leader of such a small town band of bandits, that is a pretty expensive fancy boat. 
I draw my scimitar and I tell her, tell us where the key is or we slit your throat. Don't, no, hold off. Please don't be a slit your throat. You just need more answers. Uh, hearing Ixlana kind of try to stop you a little bit, she summons her willpower to look defiantly at you and says, no. All right. I take the pommel of my sword and I strike the side of her face with it. I don't want to be a party to watching this, so I'm going to go and open the chest myself. Fezzik, jog his memory. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead and um, click on your token, and under attacks, um, just roll... Uh, oh, well, no, I guess it, it would just be your... Um, your, your regular scimitar attack, but you're dealing non-lethal damage. So uh, go ahead and, and roll your scimitar. Normally you would take a negative four to the attack roll for trying to deal non-lethal damage, but because we're talking about a, you know, bound prisoner here, it it's not, it's not hard to strike. By the way, we're... Where is the bandit leader? Right here. So we're not going to do anything uh, major after they wrap up here. Um, but I am going to move you guys to the next uh, map. So when we meet for the next session, Bruce, you guys will be outside of the cave. I'm just going to let them wrap Sounds up good. what they're doing here. Okay, so um, you clonk her on the head, and uh, I guess you didn't mean to jog her memory so hard. Because you knock her unconscious. And she is bleeding from the head and could be dying. Healer and healer. Don't tell, me, don't tell me she's dead. Look, I, I'm going to stabilize her. Healer and heal Scotty if you can. Ixlana's like, none of that. <laughs> now heal her. Very effective intimidation tactic, too, by the way. Knock him out and then heal him. And they'd be like, yeah, you want some more of that? <laughs> I'll do this six times if I have to. <laughs> um, so, does this bring them to one hit point or just to zero hit points? I don't know. That I creature is zero. automatically stabilized and does not lose for... Oh, no, okay, yeah, they, they don't even... They, they're just stabilized. So she remains at negative. She is stabilized, but remains unconscious for now. I just put heal at 21. Which uh, you ma managed to bind her wound so that she will uh, benefit from, from good rest, despite the fact that she's kind of out in the wilderness and has a serious head injury. Yes, see you next time, Bruce. Have a good day.
Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're not we're not going to do anything. It's all good. We're just going to kind of wrap up and take care of of what's going on here. Um, so, yeah, uh, the bandit leader is not dying thanks to Eric using his druidic powers to stabilize her. But she is still unconscious. And so um, you guys can decide what to do from here. Mm, first thing first for me is the chest. Okay. So, I mean, deducing I mean, that the key is on the bandit leader, you you just need to search and get it off of her. And, and she's unconscious, so no problem. Yeah, yeah I'm going to search her. Yeah, so um, searching her... Uh, you find hidden on her person a ornate looking key that must be for the chest as well as a small locket and inside the locket is a painted picture portrait of a very beautiful woman who looks a lot like an older version of the bandit leader and the edge of it is burnt just a little bit. You also find um, a, a hidden coin purse. So there's the coin purse that Ixlana found when she patted her down and that coin purse had 35 silver worth of assorted coins. Um, you can just write down 35 silver. It, it probably had some, you know, copper pieces and, you know, bits of, of different values, but it, it adds up to 35 silver and uh, inside her her armor tucked away in a secret area is a, another coin purse and that one has several different values of gold pieces so the same as like there's a $1 bill and a $20 bill there's there's a gold piece that's worth one gold piece and there's a larger, heavier gold piece <clears throat> that's worth um, five, ten, you know, greater denominations of gold pieces. And there's also one platinum piece and several assorted gems. An emerald, a couple of amethysts, you know, just assorted stones and minerals of of value all right how do we divide all that like make appraise checks and we figure it out amongst ourselves all right i'll do and it i'll praise check on the gem all right Ixlana. An experienced bard who has seen the markets and bazaars of dozens of different towns knows the value of gems and quickly deduces that there is one just stunning emerald that is worth 25 gold pieces. Alright, so 25 gold pieces. Um, do I need a praise check on all of it, or is that a praise good for everything? That's good for everything. I'm, I'm continuing. You find three amethysts. Each one of them could possibly fetch 
a slightly different price if you were to haggle down to the exact silver pieces worth of of value but in general each of them are worth roughly two gold pieces right And this is searching the bandit leader or the chest, I'm sorry. Th this is this is the bandit leader and her secret coin purse. And then okay. you also find a um opal and you can identify it as an opal and can identify that it is worth at least five to ten gold pieces just based on on everything but you've never actually seen this kind of opal before and so you have no idea what its actual value is all right i'm gonna put that in my bag um so i'm gonna have to get identified and then the coins um i'm i'm not gonna split up and and say you find one that's worth five and one that, you know because then you guys would have to you know sit there and try to evaluate exactly how much each of them is worth and try to split them up fairly and all of that Instead, I'm just going to total it up and you guys can split it up the way that you see fit, you know, because you guys could always exchange coins between yourselves until the values equaled everything anyway. So um, the total value of the gold pieces on her, uh, I'm actually going to roll randomly for. Seventeen gold pieces on on her in the secret pouch, and thirty five silver pieces. All righty. So that's what was on her, as well as the ornate key and the masterwork bow and masterwork arrows. Um, so opening the chest, which I assume is the next thing that happens, uh, who opens the chest, by the way? I think Golf was going to open it. So you, so you, you hand him the key? Uh, yeah. Oh, Eric has the key. So if Eric hands me the key, I'll open it and I'll try to be cautious about it, but... You know, I'm kind of greedy and excited. Okay, so you insert the key and turn, and nothing happens. The key the just key spins gets... and spins and spins freely. Well... This is a very stout chest that looks it, yeah. it is definitely well made, yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to try and bust it open with the palm on my sword. Um, is it like a... Is it... Is it just because it needs to be picked or... Maybe I'm going to check and see if it's magic. So, um, Ulf, you're frustratingly trying to twist the key, and Ixlana tries to see what's going on, and you you are like, I don't know, maybe the whole locking mechanism's busted. 
uh, strength check or attack roll to it, hit it? Well, with it one. it depends. Um, it's a it's a strength check if you're just trying to break it open in one in one move, and then if you want to just you know chop it apart then those would be attack rolls if we were in the middle of combat but because we're not in combat you can just you know it, it's a chest it's not going to fight back yeah i'll try a strength check first and if that fails i'll hack it to bits using all of your warrior strength you bring the hilt of your sword down on top of the chest you manage to splinter and crack the top and you can you can tell that a few more blows will get you like a, a hole in there but that it's going to take some work to just break it open I'm making sure i don't so i'm checking to see if i have a crowbar All right. So. Oh, and by the way, uh, now the chest is no longer uh, valuable. I mean, you can still get a little something for the precious metals and all that, but it's slightly broken now, so nobody's gonna want it. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep busting it. He breaks the pretty box, and. As you do so, inside you you find what looks like colored, powdered, and broken pieces of a really fine ceramic or some kind of eggshell like material and there's little bits of gems and precious metal filigree all um covering a torn up velvet lining the box held a extremely valuable Fabergé egg. Well, I'm disgusted to see such a shattered trinket, and uh, I'm going to leave that to Ixlana, and I'm going to uh, go make sure that the people outside are still secured and start thinking about making camp for a uh, long rest and uh, hopefully convince Hildred of that too. Uh, he, he hands you the box and says, here you go, you can have it. <laughs> it's open! <laughs> I good job, knew, good job. I knew that it was probably magic or something. Um, you should roll a praise, Ixlana. Just with a cursory glance at some of the filigree and precious metals and gems, which, by the way, the gems still have value uh, and the metal could potentially be melted down. But um, this this was worth more than the sum of its parts. So although yeah. the although the gems have value, the egg you can tell from some of the work that remains that you can see and from the types of gems and everything that at a minimum this egg was worth 5 to 10,000 plus gold pieces. Fucking idiot. He just cost us a fortune. All right, so um, I'm gonna. It's a stupid egg. No, it has a lot of value. One of y'all needs to put it in your pack, so maybe when I have a long rest, I can mend it, or attempt to mend it. 
Ooh, I forgot you have that spell. Yeah, it might it might uh, require a few castings, you know, because we're talking about not just repairing a tear in a in a shirt or or a missing link in a chain mail suit of armor. You know, we're we're talking about a egg that has been smashed to pieces by a raging Viking who couldn't get the locking mechanism to open because he doesn't ever deal with locks and didn't know that this particular lock needed to be turned a half turn to the left, three full turns to the right, and then a full turn to the left to unlock. Yeah, so unfortunately my perception crest was sucky when I tried to figure out the first time. You know, we yeah, could have waited until the bandit leader woke up. Nah, you could have, but I wasn't going to, so. <laughs> Just okay. saying. She's, so, she's going to cry when she wakes up. Somebody pick up the freaking pieces and put them in the bag, because I can't carry anything else. I'm already encumbered. I mean, I'll take them once you put them and secure them in a bag. All right, well. I... But right now, after I'm so disgusted, I've walked away. I'm going to start dragging the bandits that are tied up in the cave so that we can keep an eye on them. And oh, so we can uh, plan the bandits who, who fled freed their companions that you left outside. Okay. Well, then uh, that, that begs the question on if we want to stay here. And that's a conversation we need to have. Once I see it. All right, I'm going to roll perception check, see if there's any other dangers or any, you know, and see if it's safe to stay the night. Um, yeah, so pretty much uh, Star is going to be your best bet for handling that. And I guess I lied when I told Bruce that we'd uh, be outside the cave next session because we'll go ahead and let you guys decide at the start of next session what you're going to do here, whether you're going to um, move to a different location or spend the night here, whether you can secure yourselves it's here enough. Get out of here. It's best we get out of here. We have the bandit leader. Uh, one of the bandits yeah, got she's away. still unconscious. And How and Hild curious? and Hilderid wants to uh, go find her son as soon as possible. But until the bandit leader is conscious, you guys can't really go anywhere. And uh, the last thing that we need to do, um, just because we haven't done this yet, is Eric, you need to roll a fortitude save. Um in order to avoid becoming tired now that you are in negative vigor. So basically you've used up all of your stamina, all of your vigor, and that is the normal amount that you can do without becoming tired. But you don't just automatically become tired as soon as you use that up. There's just a chance 10 plus whatever amount negative you are, so 11, is the save difficulty class. If you roll a 11 or above, you're not tired just yet, and you, you find your second wind to be able to keep going. Or if you roll a 10 or below, then you are tired, and the next time you do anything that costs you any vigor, you have to roll again. And um, this time you would become fatigued and then finally exhausted. And if you do anything after you're exhausted and you fail your roll, then you just you pass out from exertion. OK, so when I went to go strike the bandit leader with my with the pommel of my sword, my scimitar, it took uh, one of my bigger away. Right. Is that something that would take bigger of uh, yes. strike like that? Yes. Any any attack um running and um physical exertion like swimming, climbing, um 
you know, it's certain special um, maneuvers and, and all of that, depending on, on what they are, all cost you um, vigor. But you only have such a small amount of vigor right now because you're level one. You're, you're going to quickly gain vigor, and as soon as you guys rest, you are going to level up to level two. So I would like to um, get that taken care of in between sessions as well so that we can uh, start with you guys at level two all ready to go. You're only going to regain the amount of wounds and vigor that you would normally regain for being level two, you don't automatically refill like a video game or something like that. Um, but now that you guys have completed this battle, and in fact, uh, during the last battle, you guys technically should have leveled up at the end of that battle, but because you were right in the middle of another battle, we needed to finish this one. And now when you guys rest, you will level up and you'll gain more maximum vigor and and all of that. So, <clears throat> um... What kind of save was it? Fortitude. Constitution. Constitution, fortitude, same yep. thing. Well, fortitude does, does uh, give you a little bit more if your class is geared towards it. And um, so right now it is probably late afternoon, maybe a little earlier than that, maybe early afternoon. Okay. And you can find your saves by clicking on your token, clicking defenses, and then your saves will be right there. All right. So do we need to decide anything else right now, or are we good? We are good right now. Uh, okay, so you saved, so you're not tired. Uh, we are good right now. Um, so like I said... I would like to, before the start of next session, get you guys leveled up. Um, if there's time, you know, to to go over anything uh, that we need to go that we need to go over. Okay. Um, we can we can do that, you know, throughout the the next coming weeks here. Um, otherwise. The, the biggest thing that I need from you guys, and you can log into Roll20 and do it at any time, is to roll for your hit points. Um, it's, it's not your actual hit points, but roll your hit dice for whatever class you're taking. And um, let me know what class you're taking. So... Just, you know, type out the class. Yep, Ranger, D10, you got an 8, perfect. That's all I need from all of you is what the class you're taking and roll for the hit points. That's going to be your vigor uh, that gets added to your maximum vigor. And so as long as I have all of that, I can do most of the work myself. And then if there's just any choices that you need to make, let me know you know, what choice you made. Some classes have like, you know, pick this or pick that. So uh, Ranger, I know, has like the combat style. So just let me know and I will get most of the work done. If you guys need any help, let me know on Discord. I'll try to, I'll try to work with you and, and figure something out so that we can get your character built. Right. And I think the bard has to pick a new spell that they learn, stuff like yes. that. Uh, yes. Is Hildred going to not want to take a loan? That's going to be a diplomacy check for uh, Ixlana to have fun with. Yeah. I'll just take a 20-minute. I mean, it doesn't matter. 
the fucking leader's unconscious and she knows where the sun is, so we can't go anywhere. Yep. It's either we drag her and risk killing her until we get somewhere safe and then take a rest there, or we take the rest here and hope no one attacks. But that that's a you do choice that you do have their to. leader if they were to attack. Yeah. And I'm happy with taking a long rest and marching right out there, but that's also up to Scotty and the rest of the players. Well, Hil- Hildred doesn't even want to take a rest. She she's like, well, let's go. You well, know. Hildred needs to not do that because Hildred needs to understand that we have to rest. <laughs> take a twenty diplomacy check and slowly yeah, but, explain it but to her. But she doesn't need to rest, and her son is dying, possibly dying. All right. Doesn't matter. We can't heal the bandit leader to get a head start on it. She can go out there on her own if she wants. But uh, well, she, Lana, if you want to yeah, make a she, she she is going to wait for for the bandit leader to wake up. But as soon as the bandit leader is awake, she's going to force her to show her where the where the trail is and and go find her son. Okay, so we'll figure out how to deal with that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Great session. We will uh, pick up next week with you guys at level two, but not rested just yet. We'll wait. We'll wait for um, you guys to to uh, decide exactly what you're going to do together and figure that out. Figure that out. Right. And that's real quick to resolve one way or another. Yes, exactly. You're either resting here or resting somewhere is pretty much the gist that I get. And Hildred might or might not go off on her own. We'll see. Yeah, and that's going to be between the skill checks and Hildred's character. So. Yep. All right. Well, uh, this was great, you guys. Um, thank you so much for playing. Really, it was a great session. So I will see you in about two weeks is that the yeah Yeah. two weeks thank you chad absolutely bye guys thank you all right so my idea is that we let her take the guy the leader and get catch the trail and we follow her later Mm, that's an option but you're still wounded 